Today we are delving into the Nikon D500's photo shooting menu. I have a playlist at the link above with videos like all of my detailed menu walkthroughs for the D500, a body tour, my full review of the camera, some photos I've taken with it, and a few other D500 topics. That link will stay up there for the entire video, and there's a link in the description below if you want to see even more. For my patrons through Patreon or for VIP members of Snapchick.com, I've created a special video called My Personal D500 Menu and Body Settings, where I show you how I've put together my own hand-picked settings into a configuration for the D500 that is ready for many different types of shooting. For now, onto the photo shooting menu. This is where you adjust your shooting options for still photos, like where the photos are recorded or how those files get named. The photo shooting menu is the second menu down on the left side of the screen. And your first option in it is the photo shooting menu bank. You have four banks here from A to D. A shooting menu bank is a combination of options within the shooting menu. You can set the bank so that you can go back to it and the camera will automatically reset itself to those options. Incidentally, you are always in a photo shooting menu bank, though you may not really notice that you are. You can see which bank you're using by looking at this menu item or by looking at the info screen. You saw before that you have four banks. You can set each bank up to hold a different collection of settings so that you can quickly make multiple changes to how your camera is set. Keep in mind, there are certain options though that can't be selected for use in these banks, but I will mention those as we go through the menu. Now back in the menu, you can choose your shooting menu bank here, but you can also rename the banks here. If you wish to rename it, you highlight the bank, press the right arrow on the multi-selector and navigate through the naming, or you can simply press OK on the bank letter of your choosing. Now, you set up the shooting menu bank simply by choosing the options you want in the shooting menu. You don't have to specify that you want them in the bank. They will automatically be saved there. As we go through the options on the shooting menu, we'll be setting up bank B because I'm choosing it now. So with every setting we change in this menu, it will, rem it will remember it as bank B. The next item down on the list is extended photo menu banks. This is one of those options that does not change by bank because it is either on or off. If you turn it on, it will add some items saved in the shooting banks. It will include exposure mode, shutter speed for when you're in shutter priority and manual modes, and aperture for when you are in aperture priority and manual modes. Storage folder is where you choose where your images are stored on your memory cards. You can select a folder by number or select a folder from a list. Selecting a folder from a list shows you the folders available already on the cards. Selecting a folder by number allows you to create a new folder. You can see which card you're creating the folder on in the upper right. Here you can see that the XQD card is highlighted. You also see rename here. By default, the D500 will name new folders for you, starting with ND500. Choosing rename, you can change the way folders are created in the future, but you cannot change the name of existing folders. Next is file naming. The default on Nikon cameras is for the image file to start with DSC, then underscore, then four numbers. Or if you're shooting in Adobe RGB, underscore DSC numbers. But you can change the letters here if you wish. The primary slot selection and secondary slot selection are next. This is where you determine how the camera is going to write to the memory cards. In primary slot selection, you choose if you want the camera to write to the SD card or the XQD card first. Then for secondary slot selection, you tell the camera what to do with the other card. You can have the images overflow, meaning that when your first card fills up, it writes to the second card, or you can have the images back up to the second card. This is a good option for when you want to make really sure you have your images, even if the first card fails for some reason. Last, you can choose to write raw images to the primary card and JPEG images to the secondary card. Flash control is only available when you have a flash on the camera. There are different things you can do with the different flashes here, but some of the options are changing the mode of the flash or adjusting the flash output or options for remote flash when you have a remote controller mounted on the camera. Choose image area is next. This is where you choose how much of the sensor you utilize. There are two options here, DX, which is 1.5X, 
or 1.3x. Next, we have image quality and image size. You have many options for image quality. You can shoot three different file types, JPEG, TIFF, and RAW, with options for each. First, there's RAW, and there are options later to determine how RAW behaves, but then there are several options for JPEG. You can choose basic, normal, or fine, or those same three options with a star next to them. The star means that the files are compressed for maximum quality. Without a star means that the files are compressed for smaller file sizes. Then there's TIFF. You can also shoot a combination of RAW and JPEG, RAW plus JPEG basic, normal, or fine, with or without stars. And into image size, here you choose the size of the photos for both JPEG and RAW images, small, medium, or large. Now you may remember a bit ago when I mentioned writing RAW files to the primary card and JPEG files to the secondary card. These two options are related. If you have all of your images writing to the primary card and you choose RAW plus JPEG here, you will be writing both files to your primary card. If you choose RAW plus JPEG here, and you've chosen to write a RAW file to the primary card and a JPEG file to the secondary card in that other option, the camera will also do that. Now these are options that you can also change by using buttons and dials on the top of the camera. You press the quality button on the left and turn the rear command dial to cycle through all of the quality options on the menu and turn the front command dial to cycle through the size options. Let's talk about image quality and image size for a second. I'm not going to get into the debate on RAW versus JPEG, but I do want to talk about considerations in photo editing and file size. When choosing your image quality and size, keep in mind two things. One, the file size that you're creating and how much space is on the memory cards that you have with you and how you plan to store all those images at home. This is especially important because these days cameras are making larger and larger files. And two, how do you plan to edit the images? Not all image editing programs will edit RAW files, so make sure you're equipped to edit the files that you are creating. The next option is NEF RAW Recording. In image quality a moment ago, you chose the compression of your JPEG files, but the compression of your RAW files is a separate menu item here. You'll choose RAW Compression and Bit Depth. You have three options under compression. You can choose Lossless Compressed, where the images are compressed by 20-40% to 40 without any effect on image quality. Compressed, where the images are compressed more, about 35 to 55%, but with negligible effect on image quality, or uncompressed, where the files are not compressed at all. And then under bit depth, you can choose 12-bit or 14-bit. The difference between the two is that you'll get a larger file, but more color data with 14-bit. In ISO sensitivity settings, you can set the ISO sensitivity from a list. You can also do that with the ISO button on the top of the camera and the rear command dial. Back here in the menu, you also have auto ISO sensitivity control. This is where you can have the camera decide which ISO sensitivity is best for your given situation. You choose on or off, then you can also set parameters. You can set the maximum ISO sensitivity, meaning the camera won't use anything higher, and also the maximum ISO sensitivity when using flash. Then you can also set the minimum shutter speed. You have a list of shutter speeds, and one of your options here is auto. Incidentally, you can also turn on or off auto ISO using the ISO button on the top of the camera and the front command dial. In white balance, you have nine choices along with some fine tuning for some of them. You have auto, where the camera will try to figure out what color temperature to use. Within auto, you have three options for fine tuning. Keep white, which reduces warm colors, normal, and keep warm lighting colors. Next is incandescent to use when you are under incandescent lighting. Next is fluorescent, which has several ways to fine tune. You can choose sodium vapor lamps, warm white fluorescent, white fluorescent, cool white fluorescent, day white fluorescent, daylight fluorescent, and high temperature mercury vapor. Then there's direct sunlight and flash for when you're using a flash and cloudy and shade. Now for each of these that I have shown you so far, you can press the right arrow on the multi-selector and fine tune even more on this chart. Then there's K for Kelvin, where you can choose a specific color temperature. You choose the temperature, and then you can adjust it from green to magenta. Last, there's preset manual. Here you can do two things. You can take a photo of a neutral gray or white object, like a gray card, and set the white balance off of that, or you can copy the white balance from an existing photo on your memory card. 
you can have six presets stored here. Now you can also change white balance on the top of the camera with the white balance button and the command dials. Pressing the white balance button and turning the rear command dial, you cycle through the white balance options on the command screen. But when you have additional options in the white balance setting, like fluorescent, you turn the front command dial to change those sub options. The next option in this menu is set picture control, where you choose how the photo will look with regard to sharpness, contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue. You can choose standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape, or flat. Within these, there are fine tuning options. Standard is your default setting because it's good in most situations and it has fine tuning for sharpening, clarity, contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue, or there's a quick adjust that will amp up or mellow out all of these at once. If you do make any modifications to these, an asterisk will appear next to the picture control name in the list. In neutral, the camera will only do a little processing and will give natural looking results. The intent is that you would use this setting if you plan to do a lot in post-processing. You have all the same fine tuning options here. Now Vivid will intensify primary colors. And again, you have the same fine tuning options. In Monochrome, your images will be recorded in black and white. A note on Monochrome though, is that if you are shooting in RAW, the image will show up as black and white in playback, but you are still recording the color information and you'll be able to access the color image in post-processing. In fine tuning here, you have sharpening, contrast, brightness, filter effects, yellow, orange, red, and green, and toning like sepia or cyanotype. Next is portrait, which focuses on skin tones. You have the same fine tuning options as the other color options. Landscape focuses on colors that will give you intense landscapes and cityscapes. You've got the same fine tuning options here too. In flat, details are preserved across the tone range. This is intended for use when you plan to do a lot of work on the image and post-processing. And then you have the same fine tuning options here as well. One last thing is that you can also get right to this menu by pressing the key button on the back of the camera when the LCD screen is off. The next option is manage picture control. In save edit, you can choose from your existing picture controls, edit it using the fine tuning options we talked about before and save it. Or under load save, you can bring in new picture controls that are saved on the memory card. This section is handy if you set up a custom picture control on one camera and you wanna put it on your other cameras. Also, when you have custom picture controls, rename and delete will become available. This is sort of one of those options that you can't change from shooting menu bank to shooting menu bank. You can have shooting menu bank B, remember to use neutral, and shooting menu bank D, use vivid. However, you can't have shooting menu bank B use neutral with the default fine tuning and shooting menu bank C use neutral with adjusted fine tuning you would have to create a custom picture control to do that. You have two options in color space, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Active delighting is where the camera will preserve detail and highlights and shadows. Your options are auto or a range from extra high to low or off. Next is long exposure noise reduction. When on, this reduces the noise in your image when shooting with a shutter speed of slower than one second. One thing to note here is that this will slow your frames per second. In fact, Nikon says that processing time for each shot doubles. Next is high ISO noise reduction, where photos taken at high ISO sensitivities will be processed to reduce the amount of noise. Here you have high, normal, low, and off. However, even in off, some small amount of noise reduction will still occur. Vignette control helps to reduce darkening at the edges of your image. This option only works with type G, E, and D lenses, but you can choose high, normal, low, or off. Auto distortion control is on or off. When on, it will reduce barrel distortion when shooting with wide angle lenses and pincushion distortion when using long lenses. There are a couple limitations. This only works with types G, E, and D lenses, and the edges of the image may be cropped. Incidentally, there is an option in the retouch menu where you can reduce distortion after the photo has been taken. Flicker reduction is next. When you enable it, it will help reduce flicker and banding when you are shooting under fluorescent or mercury vapor lighting, but only during viewfinder photography, so not when in live view. You can also choose here whether or not an indicator will appear when flicker reduction is in effect. You have several options under auto bracketing set, but these only work when you are shooting in JPEG or TIFF. 
You choose the setting or settings that are bracketed when you turn on auto bracketing. You can choose auto exposure and flash, auto exposure only, flash only, white balance, or active delighting bracketing. Next is multiple exposure, where you can capture multiple exposures in one shot. In mode, we can choose off, on series, where this will remain on until you go in and choose off, or on single photo, where it will be on to create only one multiple exposure image. Next, you choose the number of shots, anywhere between two and 10, and then you choose overlay mode. If you choose add, the exposures will be put together without any modification. Average would create an average gain to be applied to each image prior to putting them together. And if you choose lighten, the camera will choose the brightest pixels for use. And then in darken, it uses only the darkest pixels. A few things to remember here are that you cannot use this in live view. And this is one of the items that you can't change by shooting menu bank. This option is on or off no matter which bank you are in. Also, you do physically have to press the shutter release the number of times you choose to complete your multiple exposure, but you can use this in conjunction with the interval timer, which I'll explain in a minute, and then you'll have the camera release the shutter for you. High dynamic range is next. This is where the camera will combine two exposures to create one image. First, you must choose your HDR mode, similar to multiple exposure, off, on series, or on single photo. Next, you choose your exposure differential. You can choose auto or one, two, or three EV. Then you must choose the amount of smoothing. This smooths the areas between the two images. You can choose normal, low, or high. One thing to remember is that this option cannot be used when shooting in RAW. Let's talk for a moment about multiple exposure in HDR. Both of them can be used to expand the dynamic range of your image. However, where HDR is flipping the mirror up once, taking two exposures quickly, and then stitching them together into one HDR image. Multiple exposure is overlaying all of the images that, you, that you've taken separately on top of one another. For that reason, multiple exposure can also be used to capture things like light trails of stars or trails of leaves floating on a stream. Photos where the scene may change from shot to shot. Interval timer shooting is the last item on the menu. This option is similar to a self timer. First is start options. You choose if you want to start taking photos now or at some other set day and time. I'll choose now. Next is interval, which is the amount of time in between photos in hours, minutes, and or seconds. I'll choose four seconds. Next is the number of intervals and the number of shots per interval. I'm choosing five intervals and two photos per interval. Last here is exposure smoothing. Now, if I turn this on, the camera will adjust exposure so that each shot matches. Now, if we look down here, we see what will happen is that once I press start up top here, is that the camera will take two photos, wait four seconds, take another two photos, wait four seconds, until it gets through all five intervals. One thing to consider is that if you choose more than one photo per interval, like I chose two just now, Keep in mind what release mode you're in. If you're in continuous high, those two photos are going to be taken pretty fast. Also, if the camera can't find focus, the entire interval will be canceled. Last thing here is that this is another option that can't change by shooting menu bank. Okay, so all that time we were setting up our shooting menu bank B, except for those items that I mentioned can't be set up for each bank. But I can now switch to other menus make changes to the settings in other banks, but when I come back to photo shooting menu bank B, all the settings that we just changed will still be there. That does it for the photo shooting menu. Some of the things in the shooting menu are accessible through buttons on the D500's body, like ISO sensitivity, but there are definitely some things in there that you have to dive into the menu to change. Now you can see all of the rest of my detailed menu walkthroughs of the D500 in the playlist to the right, plus a few other videos on the D500. And make sure you follow the Patreon link above to find out more about supporting my mission and to see how I set up my own D500.